Welcome everyone. I'm just waiting for some folks to get in the room. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Allison Hurrier and I head up the textile arts curriculum at Portland State University. For those of you joining us from outside the university, uh, the textile arts curriculum is an elective track in the BFA art practice program that provides an interdisciplinary approach to the study of clothing and textiles. We offer courses in weaving, surface design, sewn construction, and dress history that encourage students to develop portfolios from a variety of applications in apparel, costume, textiles, and contemporary art. This is one of our free public events that we're hosting this term, where we will be bringing in uh, outside perspectives to supplement our, course, uh, our current course offerings. Uh, if you want to find out more about our events, um, please visit this uh, events page that we have or subscribe to our newsletter if you want to stay posted about our programming. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share with folks today, um, since Pilar is our first ever uh, textile artist, uh, or textile arts artist in residence, if you'd like to find out more about our residency program and our upcoming deadline, you can find that under our connect tab. Uh, before we begin today, um, I would like to acknowledge that we are joining you all from Portland State University, which is located near the heart of downtown Portland, Oregon in Multnomah County. We honor the indigenous people whose traditional and ancestral homelands we stand on, the Multnomah, Kaplamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Watlala Bands of Chinook, and the Tualatin Kayapuya, and many other indige indigenous nations of the Columbia River. It is important to acknowledge the ancestors of this place and recognize that we are here because of the sacrifices forced upon them. And remembering these communities, we honor, honor their legacy, their lives, and their descendants. Today, we are so thrilled to welcome our first ever textile arts artist and resident, P Pilar Gallego. Pilar's cross disciplinary arts practice is a is a, I'm so sorry is the point at which cultural codes and gender myths intersect and collide. They look into the body and its construction to unearth unconsidered potentials and possibilities. How is one made a body a subject? By what forces? How can we work within, through, and past existing systems of confinement to a portal into liberation? Gallego's art practice departs from their mutant subjectivity, which is a product of their transnational and transgender identities. This embodiment leads to investigations into location, assimilation, gender, and our complicated desire for the other. Gallego looks into the closet wardrobe as a repository for potential selves, considering the ways in which design marks and speaks for the body. Their research continues to grow and expand into ideas where queer implications arise, op art, sculpture, and installation, the object subject in space, live movement and performance and interactivity. Gallego has completed residencies at the Shohegan School of Painting and Sculpture and Yado. They received their BFA from Pratt Institute and is a graduate of the MFA program at the California Institute of the Arts. And we are so thrilled that Gallego now lives and works in Portland, Oregon. As a part of their residency, Pilar will be facilitating group discussions with queer, trans, and gender non-conforming PSU students of all gender expressions to discuss how clothing and fashion impact their experience and constructing of their desired identity. Pilar, we are so excited to have you with us today. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super thrilled to uh, be the first artist in residence in the textile program. And for inviting me, Allison, thank you so much. And I'm really eager to meet all the students and have conversations with them. Um, so I'm just very excited to share my work um, with you all and um, all the thoughts that I have regarding identity, um, otherness, and so on. So um, yeah, thanks. thanks so much for having me. Great. Um, I think you should, were you gonna share your screen? Uh, yes, if we're ready to um, yeah. start, I'd be yeah, happy let's, to. Yeah, let's, let's start. Yeah, let's start with the okay. talk. And then, um, so folks, um, uh, Pilar is going to do a, a, the artist talk, and then we're going to um, take some questions at the end. Um, but feel free as we go, if you've got questions, to, to type them in the chat, and we will make sure to address them um, before we leave today. So, uh, Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, yeah, and feel free folks to um, ask questions. 
questions. I'd love to engage all in conversation about the work and just about whatever comes up for you um, as I you know, share my work with y'all. Um, so yes, I am um, a visual artist. It's sort of very interesting how I came to be working the way that I work now. Um, I mostly do uh, soft sculptures currently. Um, I also have a, another practice that's sort of developing. Um, and I, I will go further into that as, as um, we go through the slides. Um, but, you know, I guess I'll begin here with um, this work that's called A Spectacle. Um, and, you know, as a trans individual, I have been very mindful of the way that I've kind of create my own identity and kind of like, how do I see myself in the world? How do I you know, just even in the mirror, how to like, you know, this kind of complication of like, is the person that I'm seeing in the mirror a reflection, a true reflection of how I feel inside. And, and so kind of like coming from that very, you know, personal space is how I kind of come to making work. And uh, this is a work that was made in um, 2014, which is, or 2000, and, yeah, 2014. Um, I had recently arrived in LA from New York City, where um, we are fortunate to have many queer uh, beaches and, and public spaces. And, um, you know, I arrived in LA and I really wanted to feel that that sense of community and and, and pleasure uh, in one's body. And I couldn't find it. And so I um, was really longing for that. And so that was like one part of like the thought process um, in conjunction with sort of like this whole idea of like, how do I as a person born female, but identifies with like a more trans masculine, masculine uh, presentation and, and, and being, um, how do, how do all these things sort of like fit together in a sort of work? Um, and so I kind of created this like, like utopic, but also like very alienating space for myself, a recreation of like a beach um, where, you know, queer, my body is able to be nude and, um, or semi-nude and be free of a certain kind of like gaze. Uh, because when, once you're in like a queer beach, like like the ones that I would frequent in New York City, like Reese Beach and Fire Island, you know, queer bodies are able to sort of like exist without the sort of, um, you know, the hetero gaze or the male gaze or like this sort of oppressive gaze. And so this is sort of like this, um, respite uh, or, or this sort of like, um, yeah, this sort of like imaginary respite space where I could find that same um, freedom in uh, being in like a nude, in a nude way. So anyway, this, this show is called The Spectacle and I'm presenting myself um, semi-nude, but with, and I had made clothes uh, out of wood also in relationship to this idea of like desiring a, a more masculine presenting body and kind of like thinking absurdly about that, about that desire. Like how, if, if I cannot at this moment, you know, present male because I don't have access to any kind of medical intervention, um, what is like a way that I could do that? So clothes is, you know, for most, trans masculine folks or trans feminine folks like that is like a way of creating identity for themselves of a desired identity. Um, so I pushed that idea and made wooden clothes thinking about the flat surface that hardwood provides and kind of thinking about this sort of like very angular and like flatness of the chest that um, we think about uh, when we think about male bodies. So all of these ideas I'm just like thinking about and. Um, offering this 
audience to sort of like then come in to the space and to gaze at not only the sculptural body that I'm offering back there with like a mouse head um, that is a sort of an amalgamation of like, or a kind of like a glitch, a gender glitch. Um, uh, so it, you can't quite really pinpoint, you can't really read that body, but I am offering that body to be read uh, to the audience. Um, and, and similarly, I'm offering my own body and my friend's body, who's a cis gay man. Um, we're all offering up our bodies as to like, how are bodies made? You know, like, wh what are we really looking at when we are looking at another person? Um, you know, there's like this whole notion that you, it's, it's rude to stare at a person, but I'm, I'm welcoming that stare. I'm welcoming that sort of like gaze and, and scrutiny because it, it, I do experience that. Like queer people and trans people do experience that sort of scrutiny. And like, let's, let's actually, let's actually be real about it. Um, and so, but, but I'm also offering my body in like a very um, generative way. It's not like, it's, I mean, it's a complicated, no, like kind of offer you know, that with the gaze comes a violence, but in this sort of like, you know, um, space, it's more about like me as an art object as well, me as a sculpture or, um, you know, my, my friend um, Khan also like, what's his body makeup? You know, how is masculinity made? How do we make these subjectivities? So, that's um that's kind of that and then at the end of like so this kind of goes on for 10 minutes um pilar i, th I think we like might have lost you hold on one second oh I'm not sure if other people had that issue or not. Could you just maybe repeat when you started about sure. this goes on for 10 minutes? Yeah. Oh yeah. So the performance goes on for 10 minutes and then um, because it's wooden clothes, it's very hard for me to sort of get myself into them alone. So I asked Khan if he could help me and he does. Um, and, and so the whole notion again, is like this idea of, of, like an and a desire for something but it's like through and attaining them through like an absurd means it kind of like pointing at the absurdity of this whole notion of like you know identity and the the all the ways by which we create identity and all the lengths that we go to attain these sort of like desired um you know surface readings i suppose And again, that's that sculpture. And, and it has this like breathing uh, mechanism in, in like in its chest cavity so that like the, the chest, it's, it's motorized. So like chest rises and mimics a breathing body so that there's this kind of like confusion as to, is there a person inside there? Like, is it a real body? So all these questions sort of arise from that. And again, like mimicking like the, the body and the skin in like a very like cartoony and kind of campy way. And then um, I, this character Mousehead kind of like asked to be even more animated than just like this sort of um, mechanized like simulation of a, of a human being. And so I, um, created a video where he speaks.
Pilar, is there audio that is with the video? We're not quite getting the audio. Yeah, there is audio. Okay. Oh, okay. Weird. I wonder hmm. um, if you if you I wonder if that little um, icon with the um, that this guy. Oh no, maybe not. Um, hmm. When you share your screen, there'll be a little box that says share audio, and you just have to make sure you click that box. Oh, how do I do that? So you actually, yeah, you might want to go ahead and um, escape out of the or unshare your screen. Okay, I'll stop that and then reshare. And then share screen okay and then now oh share audio yeah audio. sorry about that i didn't realize that there was audio until no worries. <laughs> it, says, it says here to share your computer audio please install the zoom audio device oh, oh. exciting oh. okay how about i send you the link allison and oh that's maybe... fine yeah yeah that's fine i can do that okay great um sorry about that everyone thought all the glitches have been resolved um Okay, stop share and then Okay. Um, maybe I could share it like this. Let's see. Um No. Yeah, still no. Um, if you um, uh, okay. yeah, I'll, if you want to send me the I'll link, share. we can do that. Or, or um, you know, what we could also do is um, we can also share the link with everybody following this chat. Um, let me let me just try one more. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I just sent you the link, Allison. So let me see if. Okay, it is working for me. So let me um, let me share my screen. Um, thank you everyone for your patience. Everyone yeah. we still have like, <laughs> after a year of Zoom, we still we still have to figure out the stuff sometimes. So um, <laughs> I know I do like every day. So. Um, great. Can you see the video that's on yeah. there? Okay, great. So mm -hmm. um, we'll, um, let me see if I can make it big and I've seen you before. Can we hear? Yep. The blind. Meeting the blind. Yeah. I got eyes for you. Big. Tough character. I forgot your name. You're always lovely. Real rough, too. You act like an animal. Have an animal's habits. Maybe I'll strike you. Or maybe you'll grunt. And then kiss me. I eat you alive and you take it. But I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to be like you. I'm not as close to you as I like to be. What kind of a person do you think I want? Nobody can make a snap decision. You got to consider all the pros and cons. You don't have time. 
but I'll make time. I'll get paper and you'll make a list. How can we grow up like that? I thought you'd rub off my lips. Well, you're real abstract. You're wonderful looking too. I'm different. I look at me like you're the ugliest thing in the world. How old are you? And how come you're not wearing your boots? What can I do when you have to be like that? Do something for you. See, See me. I want you to teach you. I can't just go around proving things and pretending like I'm tough. Even though you got to look a certain way. Belonging someplace. Does anyone see you? I think that's it. Um, so I'm going to reshare um, again my screen. And thanks everybody for rolling with the punches there. Um, so I dressed in mouth head in this white t-shirt jeans um, kind of uniform uh, because in sort of my experience, my lived experience as I in the queer community, I would always see um, like butch and masculine um, folks like kind of presenting a certain kind of uh, uniform, like white t-shirt and jeans uniform. And I always wondered um, why, why is, where does that come from? Like, how did that came to be? And then the more I, I kind of paid attention to that, the more I sort of, sort of noticed it everywhere. And, you know, and particularly like with cis men wearing that, wearing like a t-shirt and, and jeans. And, and so I, I went down this like sort of rabbit hole of like research about like where, where did, where did that kind of come from? This whole fetishization of like the white t-shirt and jeans and um, kind of led me to these uh, mid-century films of like Streetcar Named Desire and Rebel Without a Cause. And so thinking about James Dean and Marlon Brando as like these, film icons that sort of popularize this um, sort of uh, like all American um, uniform, you know, a uniform of like casual wear and, and sort of like all the things that like those garments and like how, how they were these garments, um, the sort of meanings, uh, cultural meanings that they imbued those garments with. And so, just thinking about like that, like how these objects sort of like, we use these objects to imbue those meanings onto our bodies and onto ourselves and, and sort of ask them to speak of that kind of masculine demeanor for us. Um, so I then made all these like posters of um, kind of deformed and, um, a film, uh, you know, film icons or like teen idols that Mouthhead would sort of look up to in their own sort of deformed way of being in the world, uh, because Mouthhead is <laughs> this being this that has a, a giant mouth and and sort of is not normal in that way, and sort of and like that sort of violence that I employ is a kind of comedic and in, in the way that like you know, there's very little gore, you know, it's kind of cartoony in that way. And so I, I gave like this James Dean figure, like multiple teeth and like no eyes and um, 
this is Steve McQueen with sort of an asymmetrical body. This is Marlon Brando, um, not wearing a t-shirt, but is is a night is, is someone that wore white t-shirts a lot. And you think about a streetcar named Desire as like a film that really put the white t-shirt on the map. Again, that's uh, Marlon Brando. Imagining this sort of like, you know, being uh I just imagine like sort of like the lineage of um, the ancestral lineage of, of Malthead. It's like, oh, that they had a grandfather and this is like what the grandfather looked like. It was like, uh, you know, some sort of like old picture of the grandfather. And so this is like another project that goes further into this investigation of, of like trans identity and, and male clothing or questioning like the notion of like masculine wear or menswear. And um, so I got all these, uh, you know, kind of traditional men's clothing, like long sleeve shirts and trousers and jeans and created these, created them as like empty vessels um, in, in like, in kind of like orgasmic states, uh, sort of speaking about, um, unconventional body formations and sort of the pleasure that they too are able to derive from themselves. Um, so legs, leg openings become these orifices of pleasure uh, that can be penetrated. And so there's this like kind of self love loop And um, the way that I made these is just kind of, you know, with this shirt, there was like, I got like balloons, like kind of like those, like balloons you can make like balloon sculptures out of and um, stuff them into like, you know, the, the garment. And so I created that shape like that. And it, it and then I coated the, the shirt um, with resin. So once that hardened up, then I could pop the balloon and remove that. And so these shapes sort of like stay, staying this way. And then I elongated like, you know, a leg and just thinking about the body expanding itself, like, thinking about yeah like the potential like the, the self or you know thinking about the body is not just a physical entity but like as something that can be expansive you know and um yeah that perhaps has metaphysical abilities and then pockets again become orifices and you know a missing limb it's it's not necessarily a uh as like a tragic idea but that there's an op and the potential for something pleasurable there i mean i guess this is about self-love <laughs> Yeah, and they're all sort of in a state of ecstasy and post, um, or maybe, yeah, mid climactic state or something. And they're all in relationship to each other. So I'm also thinking about like the sense of community of your community and your communion. Um, and then this is uh, another project um, where I'm thinking about like, again, the male, the flat male chest and that whole notion. And, and again, thinking about absurdity and, um, you know, about medical intervention and, you know, what's another 
what would be another way of like not spending ten thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars, however much it costs to get top surgery to to get this like ideal chest or ideal body, and it's like this kind of you know um, optical illusion, you know. Um, so there's this printed. So this chest is printed onto canvas, and it but it gives the illusion of a, like a transparency. Um, that you could see through this like very, um, you know, um, soft organza like fabric and, and see like this, this beautiful chest of the person wearing the shirt. So again, it's like, I guess speaking about the capitalist nature of, of these, uh, of desire for the desire to have a certain kind of body. Because everything is an industry, you know. And so the back again is playing with illusion and whose back is it and whose front is it and like, um, yeah. And the title of this is um, Garamoni's um, knockoffs. And, doc and Dr. Garamoni is, um, who is now retired, it was uh, the, the uh, top surgeon for a while where, you know, all the trans guys of the early aughts would get their, their surgery, they would call. Um, and so I was also playing around with the idea of race. Um, and, you know, as you can see here, there's like this sort of like gradation and like skin tone and not necessarily accurate, but again, playing with the notion of you know, I could I could have darker skin if I wanted to. I could have the lighter skin. And so, what are the possibilities that are presented to us through like medical intervention, if they go beyond, um, you know, um, like surgery, like for, for sex re reassignment surgery or sex uh, confirmation surgery? And then thinking, yeah, I guess asking a riskier question about race, <laughs> you know which I guess I could do as a brown person. I don't think a white artist can necessarily get away with this, but I would like to see them try. And these are presented at like a, a kind of a boutique retail store. Um, and, and so it's funny to sort of like have those show these works there because they have a different relationship to um, the viewer, you know, like in a gallery space, you can read them as like artworks. But if you are like in a retail space, a, a, like a, a clothing store, then it's like, oh, these are shirts I could wear, but actually they're not wearable. They're really not, you, you really, they're not made the way a shirt are made. Um, they look like they could be worn, but they're not. And so again, it's part of like the illusion. But um, yeah, so it's, it's, I'm interested in that also like how these objects can be displayed, where they could live, how the how an audience can relate to them. And and it's also like about, yeah, like what what is relation, like how does the audience relate to them via their desire to have them or to obtain them as something that they could like show as an artwork in their home or as something that they want to wear and for, and for what purpose why would they want to wear them and so this is more like a current like the sort of my current inquiries um sort of like this how they're manifesting in these more kind of abstracted um soft sculptures i would say and these are all made from like my own um, old and worn and sort of stained t-shirts and uh, white t-shirts. And so thinking of, again about deconstructing masculinity in, in this in a surgical sort of like uh, gesture um, and kind of pinning them in the way that one would pin a say like uh, a science experiment, you know, once you like, cut up a, a frog, you know, in your biology class and you pin it down in order to sort of like understand its makeup, its internal makeup, uh, sort of 
how I kind of, that was the way that I was relating to these sculptures. And yeah, so there's like, and creating different holes and creating, which, you know, allude to like orifices for like another, you know, like an arm or an, a head or like, is it an anus? Is it like a vagina? Is it like, what sort of, what, how are we reading the body um, in this way? And in my research, <clears throat> this is like a, a larger sort of sculpture. And, and I was thinking about like, well, how do then you present, like, if you present, say, a dissected frog with pins, how do you sort of present a larger animal that has been dissected? And, and so what I was reading and found out is like, you kind of get these hooks um, and, and chains it's like metal chains and you sort of display it in this way. So thinking about a larger animal or being um, dissected. And again, like, you know, this dissection or the idea of, of opening up a body not only is like, not only is it about understanding something and knowledge production, but it's also very much personal in the way that like, you know, there's medical intervention for like trans bodies. And then this is like the last body of work, um, my more recent body of work. Um, I, in my obsessive sort of um, ways of, of wanting to present more mail or like finding ways that it's like, oh, it's just like objects, these sort of like mail clothing will make me more male. I've acquired so many shirts that like are not they don't fit my body because um, I'm attracted to a certain kind of like mid 20th century um, aesthetic of, of male fashion that um, is not aligned with my um, more curvaceous body. Um, and that's another interesting thing, how like male bodies um, have sort of change through time based on the industry, based on like the fashion industry. Um, and so anyway, I have all these like beautiful vintage men's shirts that I really wanted to sort of possess, but I, I couldn't really wear them. And I, um, so what I did is like, I ripped them at the seam with lots of care and kind of rearranged them. And, and I was thinking about patterns and like the idea of like, you know, with fashion, there is a pattern. You, you need a pattern in order to create a, a wearable garment, you know, for, in particular with men's fashion versus like women's fashion, that's more like uh, draperies, like a more um, suitable, um, yeah, technique used to make clothes. Um, and so thinking about pattern, but also like this notion of, um, the mold, you know, like there's, you have to fit a certain mold, you have to fit either a small size, medium size or large size or whatever, in order to, um, you know, be a proper customer 
for the fashion industry. And so I wanted to undo that notion. I wanted to like, well, what does it mean to fuck with the patterns? What does it mean to like cut into the patterns and create my own sort of like chaos? Um, so that's kind of like what was happening here. Um, the, I created the wood frame uh, based on, on the patterns of the shirts that I would be, uh, take care apart um so like this piece at the top um is a sleeve it's a short sleeve and this piece is like a, a left front piece um and this is like a collar right here so but then i would take all these different pieces of garments and kind of collage them in a in a subtraction and addition kind of way um, where one pattern of one piece of fabric kind of cuts into another one. So there's this whole like layered pattern. Um, yeah, dance happening. And there are all these different textiles and uh, textures and, you know, there's boxers and there's like a sailor, like a vintage sailor's top and a black t-shirt. Um, so there's, yeah, there's all these like types of masculinity happening within each piece. And so this is, this was a pocket, you know, like this is the pattern of a pocket, but it's cut out, it's removed. Um, And so also thinking about like this whole notion of like masculine colors and like the colors that like the industry sort of creates that are, are read as masculine. And then with this one, I began to add some, um, some like uh, filler inside, um, thinking about <laughs> thinking about like excess, like the the excess of a body, whether it's like fat or whether it's like a curve or whether it's like you know a a breast or something like that. Um, how that comes into conflict with like a certain kind of like masculine way, like reading of fabric. And that's it, that's it folks. I'm gonna stop sharing. Thank you so much, Pilar. That was that was fantastic to just kind of see the trajectory of your journey and to like also kind of get a sense of like where you're at now with your work and 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 the kind of stuff that you're gonna be doing with us um, this term while you're here as well. Um, I'm gonna invite folks if they've got questions for Pilar, um, just, um, you know, add them to the chat and we will, we will, we will get them answered. Um, otherwise it'll just be like you and I just talking back and forth, which is always fun. <laughs> totally, totally. I am curious, could you, would you maybe just kind of tell folks a little bit about like what you're going to be doing over the next couple of months um, here at PSU um, and just yeah. to kind of get, get people knowing about the, the ideas that you have around, around your projects? Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, this is kind of the thing that where I am now uh, in my practice where it's like, you know, a lot of my work, as we just saw, is very much about the critique of, um, you know, masculinity or the fashion industry or like my own sort of relationship with desire and like, you know, self-love. Um, and I think that uh, you know, something about the pandemic really kind of opened up this whole desire to, um, to my practice in the way that it's like, you know, I kind of got tired of the critique and I really wanted to offer more of a solution to folks that perhaps felt a similar frustration with the fashion industry and sort of like their relationship to their clothes and how they're able or not able to create their identity, um, you know, through, through, the, through, through that means. 
so I really wanted to to offer the service of of made to measure clothing. So I'm going to um, fashion school here in Portland um, and learning how to properly construct garments so that um, I can I can offer that to folks. And so uh, so there's that part, but I'm also very much interested in how those kind of skills will come into my more fine art practice. Um, I'm interested in creating, you know, yeah, sculptures in, in a more, in a way that I've been wanting to, but haven't had the sort of facilities um, to do. So I'm excited to have access to the media, to the materials lab, and create some structures for um, some some textiles. Um, yeah, that's that's very exciting to me. I'm excited to use the uh, the screen printing facilities to, you know, have some images onto these garments and onto these textiles. So I, I have yeah, I'm gonna play around a lot, and that's really mm -hmm. exciting. I'm gonna be playing around. It's a gift. One Thank of the you. things I just feel like is really exciting, especially for us this term, we've got, um, we're offering fabric and form this term, which is very much this class. It's like a pattern development class. So it's very much about mm -hmm. like this, this sort of relationship between like 2D patterns and 3D form and how we kind of get, get to those things. And I think that's what's, what's really exciting to kind of see about the work that you're showing is just that like you, um, just the, the kind of discoveries that are made through the dissection of these existing like ready-made forms and like the reassembly of them and just these really like interesting and innovative ways that like actually create sort of new understanding of form. Um, mm -hmm. That's the stuff that I am really excited about because I feel like, um, you know, a lot of people are thinking about like deconstruction like a lot of our students at least are thinking about deconstructing clothes in terms of um, like upcycling and things like that. But I think what's really interesting is like that there's this whole other level, right? When we're using garments and the history of those garments and our cultural sort of um, associations with those garments, whether they're like constructed by the industry or by Hollywood or whatever, mm -hmm. that like all of that goes into the stuff that we're actually making, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. I think that that's just, it's really neat to kind of see or start to think about like how then you, yeah, just to see that sort of happening in this kind of 2D space that you're looking at um, with finding relationships that way. But then also I just, those t-shirts, I thought like the t-shirt sort of and all the evolutions of the t-shirts and um, and things were really exciting to see as well. So I'm curious, Thanks. like that, actually speaking of that project, I'm just going to like, since if no one else yeah. has questions, I'll just ask. <laughs> um, like it's, it felt like, like the first couple of t-shirt projects that you were using were like, um, like that you were kind of responding to maybe wear that was existing in the t-shirts in some way. And then it like, maybe like transformed over time to be where like you were artificially like manipulating the level of wear or sort of imagining wear. Um, I'm curious with that if that was the case if I was like reading into that or um, wait can you I I, I can you so like for instance them? like yeah. yeah so for instance like with the t-shirts like um like the sweat stains or yeah mm -hmm. you were talking about the sweat stains right yeah and yeah. then just felt like that maybe like in the later projects like that there were these kinds of I don't know like as you were sort of creating these forms like that I couldn't tell if those were like actually like sweat stains that were from the things or if you were like manufacturing those in some way. Totally, and... totally. I think there was a, a play of both, right? Yeah. So there was like those, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Some I stained to look like they were more, you know, um, dirty, you know, mm -hmm. like from my own body, but were actually like tea stained or coffee stained like, and they, they, they were prepped in that way. Um, versus other ones that were just like staying naturally through my own wear. Um, so there was that. And and I, I like that play of like what's real, what's happening. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just it made me, it just was making me think it's like like in addition to kind of imagining these new forms, you're like imagining like histories to these forms or these mm -hmm. bodies or whatever. So um, yeah. totally, totally. <laughs> Um, can you talk a little bit about like, what is that sourcing process like for you? Is that something, are you always working with your own clothing? Are you like working with other things? Like how do you, what is that decision-making process like for you? 
Yeah, I mean, I think for me, what I'm mostly interested in is like kind of offering myself up in this very vulnerable way because it is a, I mean, I use art. I think that for me, what why I make art is because it has to feel really, uh, something has to be at stake for me. And um, if I'm not, and so it's like, the proposal for me, it's like, okay, like, just go full in, like, fully go into it, if there's something at stake. And so for me, it's about my body, if I'm speaking about, if like, if all the things that I'm like, really concerned about is the body, so it has, it has to be about my body, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and I, I also, I think that what, how that also is helpful is not about narcissism, but it's about how specificity by making something super specific, you're actually more able to connect to a more universal audience, you know, because everybody kind of struggles with their body and, you know, whether you're born in the right body or not, you know, like there is always a lack that we feel within ourselves. Um, And so I'm just sort of putting myself out there as the specimen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> I guess that's how I choose. That's how I choose my materials. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, if I'm like, you know, I love thrifting and I'm like constantly like, oh my God, I love this pattern. I love this fabric. I can't wear it, but I'm going to have it and I'm going to put it in my, you know, collection my museum of clothes as like my partner calls them you know and it's like I will make use of it at some point somehow you know there there is I think for me it's also about the affect that is in that is alive in my relationship to an object you know like I have I yeah it's like material relationships you know it's kind of like that Mm -hmm. sure um Gigi mentions in the chat also love seeing the how how the beginning of the work fitting into the rigid structure of masculinity compares to the later work where you're constructing these pliable tailor-made representations of identity to be examined so Mm. definitely that's that's great um yeah, well, we've got just a few minutes left. Like, I think a question, like one final, I don't know, a final question I have at this point, um, and if other folks have some, just feel free to chime in. But um, I, there was that one project that you were you were doing. Um, it was interesting to kind of think about like um, those shirts that had the printed um, uh, sort of uh, I- idealized kind of male bodies sure, on yeah. them and to think about like how those could be like just to see them juxtaposed and sort of like more of a gallery setup versus this kind of like retail setup, even though it seemed like the retail setup maybe was in the gallery. But mm-hmm. I think it's, I'm kind of interested in sort of, um, and I'm asking this, I guess, because it sounds like you're sort of studying fashion and maybe like thinking about like garment making, where does that like play into your thinking in terms of like how, like that relationship between the art world and sort of this kind of capitalist material culture and, and like product kind of based work um is there any sort of overlap or is that i wasn't sure um just with with the new kind of um explorations into fashion if that was some somewhere you were headed yeah yeah i mean i consider myself anti-capitalist and which is part (laughs) of the problem why i cannot be an artist in in you know and like in today's sort of world like sure there are many art worlds um but i was trained in like New York City to be a New York City artist. And I then went to LA to be an LA artist. And and so I think that being a part of those worlds with my own sort of values and ethics, like I just had to sort of rethink about my role as an artist and maker. And um, so I sort of had to like leave that those worlds behind in order to find my space and I think that uh, the way that I'm thinking about that is like uh, I need I am I am my own boss I could only be my own boss I cannot work for um, a system that is about 
exploitation, whether it's of myself or of others. And so the way that I'm thinking about gar these like kind of garments um, and service for made to measure clothing is that it's, it's a small business, you know, it's like, People are going to learn about what I'm offering and they'll come to me and we'll have a relationship where I will, um, you know, talk to them about what they, what they need and um, try to offer that, get, get that need met. Um, so it's kind of more like a doctor, but doctors also suck. And so... Um, yeah, I don't know. If that well, it's like a very pre-industrial way of thinking about clothing yeah. that I love, right? It's yeah. like we used to like actually make clothing for people rather than make people fit into this like oh my god clothing, right? right? Totally. And then it's like and it, <laughs> for sure. So yeah, yeah, it's very artisanal in that way, and it's very yeah, it's craft oriented in that way. It's I mean, there's a thing. It's like oh, it's funny. I'm in Portland, and then like I'm kind of like now fallen into this like cliche of like DIY Portland culture but it's like no it's about values it's like about I mean part of the reason why I feel kind of at home in this town is because there's a different orientation towards like um craftsmanship and um and commodities you know there's like a just different it's it's not like this mega hyper capitalist place um and it, it feels more aligned with sort of my my values. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, we do have, um, we do have one, we'll, 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 we'll end on this question. Um, just that use of text um, in your video. Can you talk a little bit more about that? And how does, I mean, sure. in general, how does text play into your work? So, yeah, I really, I made a note to myself this morning to write. <laughs> I need to write. It's funny because I went to I graduated uh, my BFA program um, with with a writing degree, but um, I don't write and I need to write. So I, I like text in the way that it's just another material to play around with and deconstruct. And so that's kind of like how the text of the video came to be um, because I was thinking about the films, Rebel Without Cause and A Streetcar Named Desire. Um, what I got is I pulled up those scripts and, um, I kind of, I, the, what, whatever dialogue James Dean's character or Marlon Brando's character, um, you know, whatever lines they were using, I sort of cut them up in order to like, and collage them to sort of serve my, the purpose of the narrative within the, the, the video. Um, so that's kind of how it came to be. Cool. Well, Pilar, thank you so much for sharing your work and your time with us today. We are, I'm just so thrilled to have you with us this whole oh, yeah. time. <laughs> it's um, going to be great really, to have you around really. the building. And um, stay tuned, folks. There is going to be um, some sort of something that we're going to have um, in the <laughs> AB gallery in April. So um, uh, keep posted on our events for that. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Every, thank you, Pilar. And thank you so much. Thank for, you. For, thank for you, everyone, for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Pilar, I'll be in touch. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.